proper use of compression during a live show can be extremely helpful to keep the dynamics of the band within the range of what can be supported by the environment that you're working in. It can also be very useful to control the dynamic range of instruments so that they can sit properly in the mix at all times. For example, you might have an instance where you have a guitar player who's playing the rhythm channel, and you get the band set up with the mix, and everything is mixed very nicely, and then the guitar player taps his pedal board and goes to his lead channel for a certain part of the song, and so the guitar tone changes, and the level of the guitar bumps upward. Now, normally, that's fine. That's to be expected. You normally want your leads to be just a little bit hotter than the rhythm side, but you might have an instance where the guitar player, based upon his particular settings, jumps higher in volume than you find comfortable, and it throws the mix out of balance when he comes on that loudly. Well, if you have a compressor on that channel, it will still allow him to bump up in level, but he won't bump as far up in level. The compressor will automatically nudge the gain down as he starts shooting up in level to keep him properly balanced in the mix. And then, of course, once he switches back to his other mode, his rhythm channel, and comes down in volume, the compressor will release somewhat and raise the level of that channel back to its previous setting. And so the compressor will automatically ride gain on the channel to keep him at a reasonable point in your mix without killing all of the dynamics. So when he goes up in level, he still goes up in level, but not as much as he would have if you didn't have the compressor in place. Same thing for vocalists. Maybe you have a vocalist who's singing fairly quietly and you have the gains turned up in order to compensate for that. And then the vocalist, during some part of the song, really gets down tight on the mic and screams. And normally without the compressor, that would be just too much range to deal with. But with the compressor, it starts pushing the gains down when that level gets really high, keeping everybody properly balanced in the mix. And so compression can be a really powerful tool to keep your band sounding smooth and tight and controlled. Now, of course, good things can also be overdone. And so if you overly compress the band, you can just squash the life out of the music. And of course, we don't want to do that. And that's one of the common complaints of the audiophile community about modern productions, is they say that a lot of modern records are overly compressed and then when that music is delivered through broadcast media, the FM radio station or the TV station, they add more compression in their signal chain. And so the end result is that the music just gets squashed down and the dynamics are uh, taken away. Of course, they do this because they want the average level of the signal to be pushed up as high as possible. So as you're tuning across the radio band, their, their station is as loud as everybody else or, or louder. Another place where I use compression to raise the overall average loudness is on bass guitar. With a typical rock and roll band, I tend to apply fairly heavy compression to the bass guitar because some bass guitars have a fairly wide jump in level from one note to the next note. And I want all of the notes in the bass to be coming through at approximately the same level so I get a nice thick bottom foundation underneath the song. And uh, of course, different musical styles vary, and this may not be applicable in all cases. For example, a jazz band, I probably would not be applying much compression on the bass. But for a heavy metal rock band, I tend to compress the bass pretty hard so that I get a nice thick, solid bass underneath the band without a lot of string noise. So let's take a quick look at a average rack mount compressor unit, and I'll go over the various controls and how I use them to uh, work with the band. Now, I'll be using a Behringer Composer rack mount compressor, which is an inexpensive, typical compressor that you may find. You may have compression tools built into your digital mixer, or you might be using a different kind of unit than this, but all of these settings should translate to whatever kind of equipment you're using. So I'm going to switch the camera over here, and we'll take a look at this device, and we'll uh, walk through the different controls, and I'll give you some of my tips on setting up your compressor. Here we have a typical rack mount compressor. This is a Behringer Composer, an inexpensive rack mount compressor that you 
are likely to find. You might be using something different. Chances are you're probably using a compressor that's part of your digital mixing board. And regardless of what kind of equipment you're using, these controls should be reflected in your compressor as well. You may have some additional features in your compressor, but these are the essential controls that control the parameters of the compression. So let's take a look at what we have here. The first control that we have is our threshold control. And this controls the how loud the signal has to be before the compressor takes action upon it. And so if I was to set the threshold control very high, now only signals that are louder than where this is set would uh, enable the compressor. As you can see, when this is set very high, my signal level is below that point, and the compressor is not doing any compression whatsoever. It's just passing the signal straight through the box without any modification whatsoever. But as the threshold control is set downward, and I come down to a certain point, now my input signal is louder than the threshold that I have set, and the compressor starts to take some action to reduce the gain. Normally what I would do is I would set up my compression parameters here for the uh, um, compression ratio and speed, which I'll get into in just a second, and I will then adjust the threshold control so I'm getting the amount of compression that I desire. If I'm doing typical compression to try to control vocal levels or guitar levels, and I want the compressor to be active all of the time and just sort of ride gain on it and keep things somewhat compressed at all times and then really take action when things start getting really loud, I will typically set my threshold to be about minus 6 dB. If I want really tight control on the signal, I might push it as much as minus 10 dB. So that means that the compressor is reducing the amount of gain on that channel by 10 dB at most times. And uh, if the signal gets a little bit quieter, then the compression will release and give me some room to move. But beyond about 10 dB, that's starting to have a, a lot of control on that channel. And it may be audible. So usually, like I say, typically I ride 6 dB of compression, maybe 10 dB if I really want tight control. If I'm using this device in a limiting mode, where I don't want it to impact the signal at all until it gets very loud and then I want it to step on the, the signal and keep things from overloading, I will um, set the threshold so that I'm seeing very little action during most of the signal and only on the loudest peaks will I see action being taken. The next control that we have over here is the ratio control and this is uh, expressed as two numbers such as 1 to 1, 3 to 1, 7 to 1 and what that means is if it is set to 1 to 1 that means that for every 1 dB of input signal change I get 1 dB of output signal change or 10 dB of input signal change would be 10 dB of output signal change if the control was set all the way down to 1 to 1 and so that would mean that the output reflects the input exactly and no compression is happening basically with a one-to-one -one ratio all the way down here I have disabled the compressor as I bring this control up let's say three to one that means for every three dB of input signal change the input signal gets three dB louder than it was a moment ago the compressor will allow one dB of output change or if I had 6 dB of input change, then I'd get 2 dB of output change at a 3 to 1 ratio. Now I normally run this ratio control at 3 to 1, 5 to 1, maybe 7 to 1. 3 to 1 is what I would consider to be fairly light-handed compression. If I'm dealing with a singer or a guitar player who's got pretty good dynamic control and I just want to smooth them out a little tiny bit, 3 to 1 is probably a nice place to be. It would be 4 to 1. If, on the other hand, I have a guitar player who has a pretty big jump in volume between their 
rhythm and lead channels and I want to smooth that out a little bit I might push that up to 5 to 1, 7 to 1 and same thing with vocalists if I have a singer who is really dynamic sometimes they're almost whispering and other times they're kind of yelling maybe 7 to 1 it's um, how much you want to really step on the signal and apply compression if you go really high you're going to just suck the dynamics out of the signal if you're not high enough, you won't have enough compression control, and uh, what's the point, you know? <clears throat> the next set of controls right here control how fast the system comes in and reduces the volume on peaks that come through, and then after the signal recovers, how, how long to wait before restoring volume back to its prior location. So this is the attack time and this is the release time. So it's essentially how fast it's moving that volume fader up and down to compensate for the signal coming in. There's also a button right here called Auto, which you can engage, which would disable both of these controls and the device would then choose its own automatic speed settings. Uh, either based upon what the designer thinks is a good compromise or the program material. Personally, I almost never use auto. Now, the speeds that I find are most effective in most situations is about 30 milliseconds of attack time and about 10 times that, or 300 milliseconds, or one-third of a second release time. There's a thousand milliseconds in one second. And so 30 milliseconds attack, 300 milliseconds release tends to work pretty well for me for most vocalists, guitars, and general compression that you want to apply full time on an instrument to control its dynamics. Now if you're using this for uh, some artistic purposes, for example compressing drums where you want it to have relatively fast attack and, um, and fast release because of the transient dynamic nature of the drums you, you may adjust these to taste but I find that 30 milliseconds attack and 300 milliseconds release is usually a pretty good starting point and I move from there depending upon what I'm feeling. The final control here is the output level. Now if uh, I've got the compressor set so that I'm somewhere around there and I'm reducing the gain by 6 dB on an average basis. Well, I've reduced the gain by 6 dB, so the signal that's coming in here is going to be 6 dB louder than the signal that's leaving. And I can use the output gain control to make up for the amount of compression gain reduction that is occurring. So if this thing's taken out 6 dB, I can then take this output control and bump him back up by 6 dB to make up for that. And so that way the signal coming in and the signal going out is approximately at the same level, although the dynamics have been constrained by the compressor as it goes through the system. So that's the basic overview of the controls that you have right here. And like I say, no matter what kind of compressor you're using, be it uh, a different kind of outboard unit or the compressor on your digital mixing board, you should have these same controls and the effects should be similar. Some mixing boards will give you another control for timing, which is a hold control. So you have the attack, and then once the compressor takes effect, there's a hold, and then there's the release. And I usually use fairly short hold times. But uh, that should give you a quick overview as to the basic compression controls that you're likely to encounter. And then we'll talk about some of the other features on this particular rack mount unit. Because this rack mount unit actually has three compressors for each channel. And we'll go over that coming up next. Okay, we've slid the panel over just a little bit so you can see more controls. Now, you'll see that we have a peak limiter control right here and uh, if I dial this back we start to see the limiter taking effect so this again is a threshold control 
and signals that are above the threshold that I've set get limited. Now all the limiter is is another compressor. So this stage right here is a compressor and this limiter is a whole other compressor that's added after this one. And the peak limiter is simply a compressor that is set for a very high ratio. Now I was talking over here about between 3 to 1, 7 to 1 is my compression ratio for most things. Well in a limiter that compression ratio is probably 10 to 1 or higher. So at 10 to 1 that means 10 dB of input change only results in 1 dB of output change. And I'm operating the threshold control right here which determines at which point that limiter kicks in and starts operating. As far as the timing of the limiter, they tend to be very fast, both fast attack and fast release. Now on this device, I don't have all of those controls. On your mixing board or your compressor, you may have that whole set of compression parameter controls for your limiter, which is how tight the limiter goes, what its attack and release times are, and so forth, and what its threshold is. But, like I mentioned on this device, all we have is a threshold control and the limiter parameters are kind of baked in. And so obviously the limiter is going to make sure that no really large signals are allowed to escape the device and, and get out. I'll turn the limiter off and so you can see that the peak light stops happening. Now on this device I've got a switch that runs in mono or stereo. And the idea is that if it's in stereo mode, both the left side and right side compressors are chained together and they apply equal gain reduction at the same time. They um, will, will take an average of the, the signals and operate in unison. Because if one side applied more gain reduction than the other one at a certain given point in time, the stereo image would be sliding left and right and that would sound unnatural. So when you Put these together in a stereo mode it just means that whatever gain reduction is being applied it gets applied equally to both channels and they they track each other in stereo mode okay we're going to talk about one more feature so i'm going to uh, take a quick pause here and uh, slide the unit over and we'll discuss the gating okay and finally we have one more control which is the expander or gate control now a compressor compresses things and expander expands things so they are kind of the opposite of each other. And that is that a gate is going to turn off the signal flow through this device. It's going to act like a, a gate on your fence. It's not going to let anything through unless it reaches a certain level. So really quiet signals get gated out and just muted. But once a signal gets to a certain level of loudness then it will be able to push through the gate and come through the device. And you might want to use this, for example, with a guitar amplifier that has some hum and buzz when it's just sitting there. And, of course, as soon as the guy starts playing his guitar, you hear the guitar sound loud and clear, and you don't really hear the background hum and buzz. But if he's not playing guitar and things are just quiet on stage, you don't want that buzz to be picked up by the microphones and amplified and passed out through the speakers. And so you can set the gate so that the gate turns off that channel unless there's enough signal coming through it. So while the amplifier is just sitting here putting out a quiet hum and buzz, that isn't loud enough to trigger the gate. But as soon as he starts playing, then the gate opens up and lets the signal through. On this device, I've only got a threshold control and you can see I've got the gate turned up really high so it would take an enormous signal in order to break through so the gate is enabled and um, that lights turned on and not, nothing is coming through the device but as soon as I start turning that threshold down the light goes out and it allows signal to pass through the compressor and everything is just working like normal. There's also a control right here that's labeled fast or slow which determines how quickly that gate comes in and releases. Some compressors, um, some gates 
will give you a full set of controls for attack and release times just like the compressor does. But on this one I just simply have a fast and slow control. Another place that you can see gates used are for creative applications. For example on drum kits where you want to allow the initial drum hit to come through but you want a, the gate to come in and close off the channel as soon as the hit has passed through to uh, get rid of any residual ringing of the drum. So you could put the kick drum, for example, through the channel and adjust the gate so that the light is just flashing on the kick drum hits so that the initial kick drum comes through nice and hard and then the gate just <clears throat> closes the channel off and gets rid of any kind of residual ringing from the drum. They can give a really punchy drum sound. So that's a quick overview of the compressor. Thanks for watching this episode of Sound Advice. My name is Barry and I'm a sound engineer in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. Love to help you with your sound issues or your questions. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And I would appreciate if you would hit like on the video, hit subscribe on the channel, and hit the bell icon so that YouTube will notify you of future content. Hope to see you again in the next episode of Sound Advice. Until then, I hope you have many great shows and successful mixes, and I encourage you to experiment with compression to see if it can make your shows a little easier to mix and a little smoother for the audience. Good luck, my friends. We'll catch you again soon.